The last intermolecular force we'll look at is London dispersion interaction. So we know that if we have something completely nonpolar like krypton, we can still liquefy it. So it must be that there's some intermolecular force in there, even though the molecules aren't polar. So it's not divine, it's not Kesem, what is it? Well, we know that even though both atoms of krypton are nonpolar, overall, we know that electrons are moving around the, uh, the uh, uh, nucleus, and at any given time, there could be a temporary dipole moment just caused by that momentary imbalance in charge distribution. And that's going to set up a dipole moment that's temporary. It's going to induce a dipole moment over here. And the same argument can be, can be made the other way around. So there's a mutual induction of dipoles between nearby molecules. The equation that gives the strength of that interaction, shown here, and because it's uh, caused by inducing dipoles, the polarizability of both molecules is important. We have the usual collection of dielectrics. And the distance dependence, which is also r to the sixth. And then we have this set of what we call oscillation frequencies. So if nu1 is the oscillation frequency of the first molecule's temporary dipoles, and nu2 is the oscillation frequency for the temporary dipoles of the second molecule, we've got this expression. So the only new parameter we have to deal with when we're working with London dispersion interaction are these oscillation frequencies. And fortunately, the oscillation frequency times Planck's constant is going to be approximately equal to the ionization energy. For that molecule. And of course those are tabulated, so we can just look up the, the ionization energy, and from that we can calculate the uh, oscillation frequency. So let's just remind ourselves that H is Planck's constant, so it's 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 Joule seconds. Okay, so if we have the ionization energy, we can calculate our oscillation frequencies, plug them in here, and then we can calculate our London dispersion interaction. All right, let's do an example. So this is the same example we've done before for Kesem and for the Debye potentials, and so we're going to be able to compare the relative strengths of the interactions. So we've got two water molecules, and they're in liquid water, we're separated by 10 nanometers. So we need to look up the relevant data for water. Water has a polarizability of 1.48 times 4 pi epsilon naught times 10 to the negative 30 meters cubed. Dielectric constant for water is 78. The ionization of energy for water is 12.6, and that's usually tabulated in terms of electron volts. Let's convert that to joules. So one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So our, our ionization energy is going to be We have all our parameters, so we can plug in to get the strength of the interaction for London. So it's minus three halves. Polarizability for molecule one times molecule two, and they're the same, so we can just plug in 1.48 times four pi epsilon naught times 10 to the negative 30 meters cubed. We're going to square that, and we have our, on the bottom we have 4 pi epsilon naught squared and the dielectric squared, 
we're writing that way because we can see we can right away we can just cancel this factor of 4 pi epsilon naught here with the one here because they're both squared. That's why it's convenient to use uh, polarizability volumes. And then we plug in our numerical factor for all the uh, oscillator strengths. So we have 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. And before we do the oscillator strengths, we can see that since nu1 and nu2 are the same because we're talking about identical molecules here, we have nu squared over 2 nu, and that's just going to give us nu divided by 2. So let's just plug that in. So we have 3.0 times 10 to the 15th 1 over seconds, all over 2. We need to throw in our distance. So we have 10 to the negative 8 meters, 6. And before we plug any numbers, we can check our units. So seconds cancel seconds. And we have uh, meters to the 6, canceling meters to the 6. And so we're left with just units of joules. We have to remember to actually plug in a numerical factor here. We're working with water, so we said this was 78.5. All right, so let's go ahead and get the result of that calculation. Okay, so remembering that this was 78.5, we plug in the numbers. So it comes out to 5.3 times 10 negative 34. Now, if we compare this to the previous water sample, or water problem, we see that the London dispersion interaction is actually, for this example, stronger than the Debye interaction, the dipole-induced interaction. And so we can see that we're used to thinking the uh, of London dispersion forces as being weak. And it is weaker than dipole-dipole, but it's not weaker than dipole-induced dipole. And in fact, if you have two water molecules uh, separated by a certain distance and you and you partial out what fraction of the attractive potential is caused by each of the interactions, the London dispersion interaction is responsible for about a quarter of the attraction between those water molecules. And of course you have nonpolar molecules, um, it's the only attraction there are between them. So it's always important to consider the London dispersion interaction.